today we're going to be taking a look at the color wheels what they're actually doing to your image and all of the settings within the color wheels panel so without further ado let's get started explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for davinci resolve like titles transitions slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts and much much more link in the description for more information so jumping right into DaVinci Resolve, as you can see down here, this is the color wheels panel. I'm kind of taking everything that's in this box here, all of these settings down here, and then the drop down to go into the other uh, wheels that are also available. If you didn't know that those are also available, they are. If you ever see these dots above and maybe a drop down, um, those are indications that there's other settings behind there as you can see over here in the curves area there's multiple different curves here and then up here for the node tree there's multiples up there as well so going back to the color wheels typically when people are thinking about color wheels they're thinking about the shadows midtones and highlights uh, in the film industry it's lift gamma and gain for color and then we also do have the shadows midtones and highlights but that's going to be over on the log wheels so they're slightly different now you might be asking what's the difference between log and the primary wheels a lot of the times what you're going to hear is overlap or like roll off different things like that where you make an adjustment and there's a slight decay of its effects onto other parameters. And that's something that you're going to see a lot when we're looking at the primary wheels. Let me show you here. So if I come over to, let's say this shot here, and we take a look over here, we can see that on the right side, we have everything is kind of brighter. There's a lot more that's brighter. And then over on this side of the image, it's a bit darker in the middle. We have a bit of blue and stuff like that. Uh, but so uh, most cases you would think like, okay, if we change the highlights, we're going to move the gain, right? And when we do that, yes, we are changing the highlights over here, but we're also manipulating the rest of the image. It's just that we're manipulating the rest of the image with a subtler effect. So there is a decay of the strength of, of the current tool that I'm using onto the rest of the image even though that this tool is all about the luminance of an image. So how bright the image is, is what the particular tools are going to be targeting, right? So the gain is going to be primarily all of the highlights and then gamma is going to be the midtones and lift is going to be everything that is along the shadows typically. But with the primary wheels and to have the aesthetic of looking visually pleasing, there's a lot of like subtle roll off or fall off uh, when you're manipulating these. So as I move this around, if we're looking in this darker area, which is way down here, completely away from the highlights, what you're gonna see is we are manipulating all colors. And to make this even easier, I made a gradient here to kind of show this. So if I was to, let's say, so right here, what we're looking at, I should back up a little bit. Over here, we have our highlights. The highlights are at the top and at the bottom are our shadows. The reason why it's a straight line is because the left side is the left side of the frame and the right side is the right side of the frame. Like, and as you can see, like right in here, we're, you know, pretty bright. So that's why at that portion, it's up there. It's pretty bright, right? So if I was to shift this into the red, what you're going to see is our red channel came up and we have peaking all the way across here and our green and our blue actually came down a bit, but it's manipulating all the way down to here. So we are manipulating the whole image. And what this enables us to do is if we take these two correctors and add different types of corrections, what we can see is we get these nice gradients that aren't, um, that, that, that just don't suddenly stop. They, 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 they roll into an, each other. They end up resulting in a more pleasing look. And that's how these particular wheels work. Now, on the opposite side of that, if we were to go into log wheels, these don't work the same way. They do have fall off, but they don't work in the same way. So if I was to take the highlights and move them up, all of a sudden we're only affecting 
the highlights. If I was to take the shadows and you know make an adjustment here, we're gonna see that it only affects down here. There is one thing that is different if you see the difference between the log and the primary wheels that uh, between the two, and that's the down here, these other correctors. If we come over to the log, we have this low LR for low range and then high range. And these are stating the amount of the signal, so the signal over here, how far up do I allow one of the correctors to manipulate the image? So if I say, okay, I want to allow more of the shadows uh, a tool to affect the image, then I can take this low range and increase it. And as you can see, as I go up, it's increasing more of its effectiveness uh, across this. So as I go up, it's you know increasing that. So that's the primary difference between them. And they have drastically different results. Uh, one of the other things that you'll notice is here we have RGB and we go into the primary wheels and we have Y RGB. Now this is kind of, you know, doesn't really make much sense when you're first starting out, like what's the difference between them? The cool thing that DaVinci does is when you go to move a corrector, what it attempts to do is it main, it attempts to maintain perceptive uh, um, luminance. So however bright an image is, it tries to maintain that even though that it's having a color shift, it tries to maintain that and look, you know, still visually pleasing. One of the things that you have the ability to do is the Y channel, which is going to be the controller for the luminance. So I can increase this and make a shot brighter or bring it down and make it darker. Um, we can also do that by increasing all of the uh, red, blue, and green. But when we do that, we're going to be increasing saturation because we're pumping that particular portion of the uh, signal uh, more colors, right? So it's going to be more saturated. So if I was to come over here, now let's go back over to one of the other images. So let's say in here, um, and if I take this controller, which is going to pump up everything, well, obviously we're going to get a brighter shot and we can bring these down and you know make them brighter. That's something that we can do. Uh, and the difference between the primary wheels and the primary bars, both of these controls do the exact same thing. They're just presented to us in a different manner. And from my understanding, the primary bars were first introduced into uh, um, color grading and then the wheels came in a little bit later um, just adding a different way to control color so on the bars the cool thing we can do is we can say okay for the red channel specifically the red channel we can increase that right if we were to come over to the color wheels what it's going to do is it's all based on where this point is if i'm going more towards the red I'm taking away from blue and from green. And as you can see down here, we go below one. So the blue and the green are down now, but the red is up. And if I come over here, we can see that similarly as well. Let me increase this a bit more so we can really see this here. So we're going up in the red, but the blue and green are coming down. So it gives it a slightly different result. Uh, and then we can always come into the primary bars and we can increase that Y, reduce the Y. And we can also state how much the Y uh, has the ability to manipulate the image further because DaVinci Resolve with the red, blue, and green on the, if we're over here, it's going to try to maintain the, uh, however bright the image is until we start to manipulate the brightness with this lower bar here. Um, but when we decrease the Luma mix, what ends up happening is now that controller doesn't work. So uh, increasing this enables us to find adjust this. So let's say if this is at default, you know, we, and we start in the middle and we go all the way up, we can, you know, drastically decrease how sensitive this particular control is uh, across the image. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is if you're brand new to color grading, 
one of the things uh, I'm going to primarily say stick to the primary wheels because it's going to have overall a better looking result. If you don't remember which one's the highlight, which one's the shadows, this little tool here kind of makes it a little easier. So it's a tool in itself, but it has a white dot here. So I always thought of this one as the highlight. This one has a black dot. So I always thought of that as uh, the shadows. And then we have this offset wheel. And what, an off what the offset wheel is, is it's just an overall control on the three channels so it does everything um exactly the same across the signal so as i move this all three of them are getting moved exactly the same way there isn't any type of like fading off or anything like that so let's go to some of the other correctors down here so we have contrast obviously what contrast is doing is it's going to pick it wherever its middle point is it's going to take the signal and then just stretch it right so the majority of the single signal is going to get pulled down to the shadows or pulled up to the highlights and you get this contrasty look so if i do that that's the look that we're getting then pivot also connects with contrast and what this does is as i was saying they stretch it's stating where that stretch is actually occurring like where the middle point of that stretch is so if we look over here as i move this pivot we can see that the stretch the center of that stretch is going to move up or it's going to move down and it's going to move everything according um, so those two kind of work together then saturation is just pretty much the same thing saturation uh, we have the ability to make things more saturated or decrease in saturation um, hue uh, hue is just taking everything and remapping it to whatever the color is alongside of that and if you don't really understand what that means this is kind of a, a, a tool in itself but it, it's like a, a histogram that has the hues all set up for you as you rotate this we can see that we're remapping everything so we have our sky up here and over here we have the the majority of the shot if i would rotate it so let's move this into you know a cyan so we got cyan up here and then we rotated everything and now it's all over here that tool is really useful um it has its put place but um just letting you know how it works then we also have a second um, set of tools down here temperature let me just reset this temperature do we want to warm it up cool it down and then the uh opposite of that which is the tint so go into magenta or like a green. Um, so mid-tone detail, what that's going to be is the mid-tone area. It's going to add almost like a sharpening onto that. Um, so you can get different things that are in that middle tones that aren't like really dark and aren't really light. Obviously add a little bit of um, on there. And then we have color boost. Color boost is almost like a saturation for the center of the saturation window so things that are below and things that are above don't get as saturated as the things that are in the middle of the saturation window um, it's kind of hard to explain without going into scopes but that's kind of what that does kind of brings up everything uh, without making some things like um, crazy obviously you can boost it up and go crazy but and then we have shadows here uh, we can, you know, control the shadows and we have highlights as well. So that's kind of how those work. Going back to these two little guys, if you were to have a shot that has pure white in it, you could say, okay, this is going to be my white point. This is going to be pure white. So let me show you down here because this is, you know, like white. If I was to take this, clicking on it, take it and put it there. Now I remapping uh the white so this corrector so that wherever i clicked that's going to be pure white and because of where i clicked and the the way in which the image looked it took a lot of the image and it crunched it up to the top right so now if we look at this we this wall here and this wall here look identical they both look at the exact same white because they're pure white right we can't really see any type of tonality here as when i take it off we can see that this side's a little brighter than this side here right so um it has its place uh then on the opposite side of that we also have the uh, black point so if you have something that is supposed to be pure black like 
completely pure black doesn't have any tonality value in it or anything and you need it to be pure black with no color cast or anything and you want it to be exactly you would take this and drop it on there as well now when i did this you might say oh well that is kind of like hold on let me close this you might say like oh that is almost like a white balance and in a sense it sort of is doing that because it's taking the white and it's making it a neutral uh, but that's not exactly how you should be doing um, that. What you're going to want to do is down here, this little eyedropper, we're going to drop it right on that white or it could be like a, a medium gray or something like that. If you have a gray card, you could use that. But what this is going to do is instead of controlling any of these, it's going to do it though for the whole image is it's going to move the temperature and the tint so that that particular point that you just had ha is completely is uh uh is, is is white balance there is this auto button they sort of updated it but i'm not really a fan of it so i don't use it at all so i think that pretty much covers everything in the color wheels panel hopefully you found some of this information useful and with that being said i think that's pretty much everything i got for you today my name's jr and thanks for watching